Be sure to check out Rob Plays. There you can hang out with me while we play video games and talk about life stuff. So what I want to do here is have a quick discussion about the Living Tribunal and the One Above All, and all new, all different Marvel. And what I'm hoping is that at the end of all this, you'll have a better understanding of how they fit into the all new, all different Marvel landscape, as well as how the door remains open for future retcons regarding their characters. And so to sidetrack for a second, for those who have not had a chance to see my videos on these characters, which you'll find down in the description, within the Marvel hierarchy prior to Secret Wars stood the One Above All and the Living Tribunal as the one-two punch. What I mean here is that where the One Above All was the definitive god, having created the first universe and setting the development of the multiverse in motion, its role was to function as an overseer, appearing in Fantastic Four issue number 511 as Jack Kirby, and Sensational Spider-Man as a homeless person, but largely remaining off hands, allowing the Living Tribunal to carry out functions on its behalf. To this end, where the One Above All created rules and regulations to ensure the balance of the multiverse, the Living Tribunal was created with astronomical abilities and served to ensure that no one being became powerful enough to upset the cosmic balance. As the best example, during the events of Infinity Gauntlet, because Thanos sought to replace Eternity as a supreme being of the Marvel 616 universe, the Living Tribunal remained off hands under the idea that the strong replacing the weak was the natural order of things. However, after the event's conclusion, because Adam Warlock had sought to use the gauntlet to impose peace on the universe, because his actions would have led to all beings losing their free will, the Living Tribunal stepped in, stripping the gems of their ability to work in unison, and forcing Adam to disperse the gems among those who would use them justly. That said, with Marvel organizing the restructuring of their universe leading up to Secret Wars, Within the pages of Jonathan Hickman's run of Avengers and New Avengers, the corpse of the Living Tribunal was discovered by the Watcher and Iron Man. Keeping the discovery to themselves in an effort to avoid a universal panic, where the question went unanswered as to what or who killed the Tribunal at the early part of Hickman's run, as the series progressed leading up to the start of Secret Wars, the story revealed that in their effort to eliminate and reform the multiverse, the Beyonders had led a campaign invading all of the different universes, killing all of the cosmic entities. During this battle which laid waste to the very fabric of reality itself, the Living Tribunal intervened but was completely outmatched, being obliterated in the process, with a version of itself landing in every reality, leading into the multiverse's final moments with Doctor Doom, Doctor Strange, and Molecule Man combining their abilities, destroying the Beyonders, and absorbing their power. Now while the conclusion of Secret Wars would see Doom's defeat by Reed who in turn harnessed the Beyonders' power and reformed the multiverse, Questions reigned as to whether or not the One Above All still existed, if it did, why it didn't stop the Beyonders, and whether or not the Living Tribunal would make its return. Answered within the pages of Jim Starlin's Infinity Finale which takes place after Secret Wars, with the story centering on the villain Annihilus laying siege to an alternate reality designated Earth-14209 and killing the entirety of that universe's hero population by drawing on the cosmic energies of Adam Warlock, in his attempts to assist in the battle, Pip the Troll woke Adam up, which inadvertently led to Adam absorbing the universe in its entirety, killing all of its inhabitants. But because Thanos was banished from the realm of Mistress Death, making it impossible for him to die, Adam Warlock called Thanos to his side in the empty expanse of nothingness, looking for the answer on what would happen next. Referencing the events to Hickman's lead up to Secret Wars, because Warlock had absorbed the essence of his reality's peace of the Living Tribunal, Adam was advised to call on the One Above All, the only being capable of reforming the Earth-14209 reality. Traveling beyond all space and time to the realm of the One Above All proper, because the original Living Tribunal had been destroyed, Thanos presents an offer to allow Adam Warlock to become the new Living Tribunal in exchange for the recreation of Earth-14209. Reforming reality at the moment before its destruction, where the events played out in seeing Adam Warlock and Thanos reviving that universe's hero population and defeating Annihilus, at the story's end, Jim Starlin revealed that Adam Warlock had now stepped into the role of the Living Tribunal under the direction of the One Above All. That said, something I want to point out here is that where this is now the standard going forward into the future of Marvel Comics, on the whole, Starlin's Infinity series has never really been considered canon material since all the stories took place outside of the main Marvel continuity, meaning that at any point a new writer could come along and retcon this information establishing a new living tribunal, or even removing the element of the One Above All entirely. But until that happens, for the moment at least, the One Above All still exists. The destruction of the multiverse by the Beyonders was allowed due to the One Above All being curious as to how it would reform, and Adam Warlock is now the living tribunal. With that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end, and I will catch you guys later.
Peace.